All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, one thing that I'm going to have you look at, if you are um, on a computer or um, even if you're on your, your iPad, there's a couple different views you can be watching this in. So I'm working from a Mac. Um, so if you're not finding what I'm talking about, put it in the chat or um, just unmute and ask me. But along the top, there is a little box that says speaker view or it is look like, looks like a Rubik's cube. If you click on that, you'll be able to see more people at one time. Looks like we have about 41 participants. Um, or if you are in speaker view, then whoever's speaking um, will, will come up largest. Another thing as a teacher that I really hadn't thought to talk about, um, but you can show your students that if I would go beside my picture, there's, um, or when I find myself, um, there's three dots and I can pin the video. And so that would make me largest um, or whatever I want. So if I have a student sharing a presentation, I might find their picture, click on those three dots and put pin video. And then they're gonna be largest on my screen and I can watch that. So that's something I hadn't even thought about when I was working on uh, um, this web Zoominar. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is I um, am gonna share my screen and I'm gonna run through all of this information on um, a uh, slideshow because when I, where's my slideshow? There it is. Are you seeing my si slideshow? Yes. Yes, okay. Um, because when I share, you sometimes you can't see the features I'm talking about within a Zoom, and so I've taken screenshots. If you write down this um, bit.ly slash Zoom Basics 101, you can go back to this later and look at these um, slideshows or the slideshow. I don't know that you need to go there now because I'm going to go through it. It might just be better to watch me as I go through it. All of these are features within Zoom. Um, however, if I just shared screen and tried to show you, they wouldn't show up. So please stop me or put questions in the chat for Katie as we go. Get started here. All right, so this is if you're on the computer app, on your computer. And like I said, I'm on a Mac. Um, there's other ways you can do this if you're not on a Mac. Um, but one thing that I recommend, this here is the, what the Zoom app looks like. So I recommend you get that down here in your toolbar. And one way to do that is up in the top right-hand corner is that spotlight. And if you click on the spotlight, type in Zoom app, and double click it, it will come down here in your toolbar. Then if you do a, um, a hold on your mouse or click on it and hold, you have some options that pop up. I should have made a screenshot of that. But one of the options in there is to leave in dock. And so I would do that. So then your Zoom is always down here. And if I wanted to start a Zoom, all I would do is click on this, just like any of my other icons, and my Zoom would come up. And this is probably what would come up. I'm gonna talk about each of the features here um, and how they can be used within your class or for um, general meetings. So we'll start with this one, new meeting. So if I just, like the, today when I was coming on, because this is my meeting room and I'm the host, I just clicked new meeting. And you guys, when you clicked um, or you typed in this number right here, you joined my meeting. If maybe I wanna get on and Katie and I wanna work on something, I just tell her to join my meeting room. I go here and click on that and I'm in my meeting room automatically. So that's how you use the orange one. Or, which we're probably not gonna to get to, but I already have a um, YouTube video up on our webinar channel. If I wanted to make a, like a screen recording for um, class to share, 
I would just go into my own meeting and do a recording. I don't think we'll get to that today, but there's already a video out there on that. So the next one, to join. So you possibly joined by clicking on a link um, and then it said, do you want to um, open in the app? And you probably said yes. Once you have that um, Zoom icon down in your toolbar and you click on it, you could click right here and then you would just have to type in that number. And it would be the last part of that, that number of that um, URL that was sent out to you. Instead of clicking on it, I could just take that last number. I click here to join. And I type that number in right here like this. And then I join. So that's one way of doing it. And um, that's kind of what I do sometimes. Then I just skip that step of having to go to the web. And it asks me if I want to join through my app. And I say yes. You could also, if you click on this little um, down arrow or down carrot, it keeps track of the meeting rooms I've been in recently. So I was, um, this is my own. And then here, um, I was on a webinar last night with Zoom about different settings. I've been in Katie Morrow's and Corey Dahl's and Ruth's Zoom meetings. And so I could just pick one of those. So here's a tip as a teacher, you're gonna wanna name your Zoom room with your name, if you wanna put um, Miss Ashoff or whatever, but then kids are gonna know that that's your Zoom room. And so they could just click on this down arrow, find you if they have multiple teachers, whichever teacher they're looking for, and um, click on it, and then there'll be that little join button again. All right, another feature you can do from this home page is schedule. So I can um, schedule meetings out. Maybe I'm going to have a reoccurring meeting that every Thursday at um, 10 o'clock, I'm going to meet with my sophomore biology class. So when I click that button, this is what comes up. I can name it. And, you know, I wouldn't put student names in it. Um, be cognizant of that. If you do, just maybe use initials because we're going to show how this goes to our calendar. Um, I pick the date and the time. Now, if I want it to be reoccurring, like I said, every um, Thursday at 10, I'm gonna meet with biology, then I would click reoccurring. And then it'll ask whether it's every week, um, every day for a week, so you can set up some different options there. Then you have two options here. You can generate automatically, which means this, number or that link, it will have a different number each time. If it's a reoccurring one, it will have the same. But let's say I didn't do a reoccurring and I just made one for biology. And then, cause we're gonna meet, everybody's gonna meet on Monday. And then I made one for um, chemistry and I just put generate. They're gonna have different numbers and that's fine. It's actually great. Um, some tips about why you would do that. Um, if you set your personal meeting number to be the same number all the time, and depending on what you set the rest of your settings at, um, kids could come and join that meeting room. Um, maybe when you're in chemistry class, you have biology kids dropping in, which maybe isn't a problem for you, and, and maybe it is. So if you generate that meeting ID automatically, it will just be for that meeting. I use my personal meeting ID all the time because um, first of all, it's easy for me to remember that number, I have it memorized. Um, and I'm not doing a lot of reoccurring. I, um, it's okay if people pop in and stuff. So it just depends your preference for that. Require a meeting password. Now that's up to you. If you click that, then it'll show up a little box with a number that um, after they've clicked on the link, they'll also have to click on that number or type that number in. Just one more assurance if you are concerned about people popping into to, um, other meetings, but I wouldn't really worry about the require password. Um, I prefer that participants video is always on. One reason I do that is it's one less thing that um, they have to figure out how to turn on and off and they'll figure it out fast enough. But So I like video on for both. 
Um, if you have a basic account, which most teachers do, you're only going to have computer audio. So you're not going to have these, this option. So computer audio is probably set there. Oops. Another important thing, or what I like, is that I can link this to my calendar. So I click here, I link it to my Zoom or Google Calendar, and when I click Schedule, then it's right on my calendar. Um, all this information and the link is in it and everything. From there, I could invite students um, or people if I knew their emails, but I typically don't do that. Um, I typically will, and I'll show you here in a little bit, um, send it just out in an email because in my email is where I have my list served and my classes, or I could put it, put the link into Google Classroom or Canvas or something. So right down here, there's some advanced options, and that's what this is right over here. This is the only thing that I do, and you, this is a preference, you can decide. I enable join before host, and I do that because if I'm not on yet, um, or if I'm gonna start this at 10, a lot of people were practicing, I saw last night, they tried to get on, and that allows them to go ahead and get, get into my room, they can see whether they can do it. I'm not there, I don't have to be there. However, as a teacher and you're doing this as a class, you might not want them to join before you. And if that's the case, if they click on it and you haven't joined, it just gives them a message that says the host is not um, in the meeting yet, please wait or something. And so it just waits and once you um, join the meeting, then they all come in. So that's just a preference there that you, you can pick. How are hey, we doing, Katie? Yep, questions? Doing really good. Um, Deb, good question about students phoning in if they don't have computer access. Um, with the uh, the I basic need to clarify on the, yeah, with the basic account, oh, what, you used to be able to do that, but because they've had so many issues, they've taken the phone in away from the basic account users. I get it. Thank you for clarifying. So if of a pro account teachers, um, a few people already had one prior to all of this happening. Then they, they maybe could, could and yes. I wasn't aware of that, thanks. Yep, any other questions? And I wish I could give a pro account nope. to everybody, but um, as this has kind of blown up, I only have um, so many pro or paid accounts, and right now that they have priority to special ed because there's some HIPAA privacy that we need for them, and um, administrators, so. All right, this next one here, the screen, share screen, I never use that. I share my screen once I'm in my meeting. Um, and so that would be if I had this set up and I only wanted you to see that front um, Zoom Basics 101 with the URL that I had there or the bit.ly, I could do that, but um, I never use that one. Couple other things on um, this home page here. I've got to move my toolbar because I can't see under here. This top up here. So right now where we're at here, this is home. The only other one I use up here basically is meetings. Um, and if I click on that, <clears throat> hang on, there it goes. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna move my toolbar again. Uh, it gives me the meetings that I have coming up that day or that are scheduled out. So there's a couple different things here. It gives me, the very top one is my personal meeting ID. And so that's what I said. If I'm just starting a meeting, this is the ID it's using. And if I just want maybe Katie and I to join together or I wanna work with a student one-on-one, -on -one, I might use that personal meeting ID. Otherwise, the meetings I have scheduled um, show up right here. If I clicked on one, then um, this will show up. So I'm in my personal meeting ID. Or if I had clicked on the Zoom basics, the same information would show up depending on what, how I had scheduled, if it was my personal or if it was just a random one. Sometimes this, is, this says show meeting invite because I've already clicked on it. So if you don't see this, um, you just have to click on that. And basically, you're only gonna see down to this meeting ID. You won't see this bottom. This is because of, its, of the pro account with the phoning and so forth. So basically what you're gonna see is this much. Um, it will have the time on there if you've scheduled it. This is my personal meeting, so nothing's scheduled. 
this is the part that I would copy and I would put um, in either my Google Classroom or send out in the email of how I want the kids to join. Um, two things about this, right here under topic, it would probably have the date and time if I had done a scheduled one. Here's the link, they would click on that link and see there's that number, that meeting ID number. But if you haven't taught them that or they don't know that, then I keep the meeting ID down there. Because if they are joining through the app on their phone or an iPad, they don't join by the link, they join by the meeting ID number. And I am gonna do a, just a recorded um, how to do all these Zoom features from an iOS or from an iPad. I've had a couple people ask because it looks different. So look for that to be out by Monday also, maybe later today. <laughs> So this is what I would copy and either put into um, uh, an email to them or my teachers if I'm doing a meeting with them or to my students. Or you could copy and put that into Google Classroom or Canvas or some other way to get out to them. All right, now we're gonna go, once we're in a Zoom meeting, there's a lot of features once we're in the, yes. Just a couple of really good questions already and I don't know if it's best if I stop you now or wait yep. till yep. later on. Nope, okay. No. So um, hearing some concerns of Zoom getting hacked, okay. not in Nebraska and other states, but um, I'm sure that that can happen with any kind of video conferencing tools, but could you just tell us, or sh assure us what privacy settings are in place for our Zoom accounts? Um, right, so there's a lot of that chatter going on, especially um, if you, I follow um, some uh, computer um, IT people. Um, like the NIDA IT people. And um, we have our setup in this, it's a statewide. So if you're in the one that is the Network Nebraska statewide, we have done our best to set all privacy. Um, so it's um, as non-hackable as we can get. Couple things, um, I saw, I just read a good thing this morning about sharing your personal ID. Um, if you're doing anything, and let's say I'm sending it out, um, on my uh, school webpage. I've seen a lot of them say, juniors, you're gonna come to this Zoom meeting at this time on your um, school webpage. Well, that's, that's not a great secure way, but if you um, just tell them the time and then email the link, then it's not out for the public. Once again, I would use that random, um, have it generate its own link each time, then even if someone did have the link, you're only gonna use it for that hour or whatever, and then you get a new one the next time, so that's a, a secure way. Um, if you wanna know the exact privacy, um, I'd have to get you that. I, don't, I just trust the guys that set the privacy stuff up because they know more about that than me. <laughs> but we are trying, and we have heard um, that there has been, I haven't heard of anybody um, in Nebraska or of our group, it hasn't come across yet that they've been hacked, but. Does that answer that kind of? Yes, that's better than what I could do in the chat. Thank you. Um, the other question, sorry, just a second. Um, the other question was about sharing a pre recorded video on Zoom for other participants. And I'm pretty sure that you're going to get to that when you talk about sharing the screen. But yep. I just want to, you know, quick clarify before that that if you pre-recorded a video, you wouldn't need to go into Zoom to share it with your students unless you wanted them all to watch it live. Right. You could actually just send them the link to the pre-recorded video and you would not need Zoom to do that, so. That's exactly right, yep. But I will show you how to show, if you wanted to watch something live together and maybe stop and talk about it, I'll show you that. Ready to keep going? I think you're ready to go on now, thanks a lot. Yep. All right, so now we're gonna talk about um, once we're in the meeting, there's a lot of tools. And um, so we're in a meeting. Once again, I'm gonna go through my slides because when I'm in a meeting, you can't see my toolbar and you can't see any of those kind of things. So slow me down if I need to. One thing when, um, and this is something, sorry, to um, share with your students. Uh, when you join, you probably got um, a message like this and they want to join with computer audio. You can test your speakers and your microphone. If they're having difficulty, they might wanna do that. 
But once the first time they've joined and they figured out on their Chromebook or their um, iPad and stuff how to make that work, they might want to check this button over here that um, allows them to skip this basically and they'll always join with computer audio. Sometimes I don't join with computer audio if I am just watching and I don't want to um, have that like I forgot to mute and I forgot didn't forget to mute and I'm just here to listen then I don't but I don't think there's probably any time you want your students not to join but they might want to check this once they've figured out how to uh, get their audio and everything um, working. All right, so here we are, we joined a meeting. When, I was, when you were joining, I was telling you that you can mute or unmute. So you should have a toolbar um, either along the bottom or along the top. And if you click the microphone, um, it will unmute you and then mute you again. There's also this little arrow or this carrot beside it. When you click that, if you are having audio issues or you have a student, you might advise them to click that and see what's marked. If you don't have um, earphones on or anything, you're just using your computer, it's the same as the system. However, a lot of kids use earphones or earbuds and maybe they're not hearing because that's not selected or the computer didn't pick that up. So that would be something to look at. Right here, we talked about when you mute your video, then you have a picture. I would advise going into your profile and putting a picture in. That way they, they know that they've gotten into the right room, um, your picture will show up. It's just a little bit more personable. And try to be on camera, even though you don't like it as much as possible, because that's good for the kids to see you. But that's where you would do that. Same thing if you're having video issues, if you click the arrow here, it gives you some different options to check out your video. All right, we're gonna kind of work along the bottom here on these tools. Um, and the first one is invite. I'm not gonna cover invite because we're sending the invite probably through email or something like that. So um, I think this is more a difficult way to do it. So we're not gonna go there. We're gonna go to the next one where it's participant. Although Molly. Oh yes. Some, sometimes, I've worked with teachers that like to just get into their room like you are now and then click on that invite button and there's a way you can copy that URL, the meeting ID, just from uh -huh. that one too. So that if you didn't plan ahead, you're already in there, but oh, you want you somebody want to join to come. You. Yep. Right. Uh, I would have to just show another you way to access that. Right. I don't have a screenshot for that, but that's something you can nope. play around just, with. You're correct. If you yep. click on that, you would um, get, you would see the URL of the meeting invite, um, or you could even just send it directly. If you have a kid that says, I don't have the invite, he texts you. Well, you could also, if you, there's an email, you could click the email, put the student's name in, send him that invite really quick. So you're right, it is a good tool. All right, the next one though, I am going to talk about is um, the manage participants. So, when I was in there, there was only one participant. And so I quick grabbed a screenshot as we were coming on. Um, Mrs. Jones and Kathy McGuire were in there already. But what it shows is if I click that, all of my participants are listed over here. There was only three at the time. We have 45 participants now. Um, but it shows me who is muted and who is not muted. And if I would hover over this, if I was live, I could actually mute and unmute those kids myself. So if you have someone that there's a lot of background noise, they're coming in, they're in the kitchen, they're trying to figure it all out, and their family's there, the dog's barking, you could go in and mute it yourself and then talk them through how to mute and unmute. The other nice thing is down here, I have the options to mute everybody. So if people are coming in and there's a lot of um, background and, and echoing and all that kind of stuff, I just go mute everybody. And then we can figure out who's um, having the issue or who's, you know, needs to figure out how to mute themselves. Um, I can unmute everybody at one time. There is um, some other things here as we get in. Their kids can raise their hand also if that setting's turned on. So that's kind of nice too. The other thing I've done for today, and we'll talk a little bit about at the end, is I've made Katie my co-host. And so since she's a co-host, so if you're team teaching by chance, you might wanna make the other person a co-host 
And then she can mute and unmute and monitor that stuff while I'm um, teaching or, or working on um, the presentation. So that's another nice feature. Oh, looks like my internet's. All right, let's see if I missed something. Next one is, is I did, it's the polling one. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna stop share and then reshare. Maybe that will help. Questions, Katie, while I'm doing that? Anything come up? Um, just how to change your profile picture like you recommended. And okay. on the Zoom home screen, yeah, just review that. We'll That'd do that good. when we get to the end when I get live again. Okay. All right, and so remind Molly, me. You might just you might stop just your video. Stop your video. Yep. Okay, sounds yep. good. Okay, sounds good. Huh. I might have to, I don't know why my polling is not showing. I don't know why my polling is not showing. We'll go to screen share. We'll go to screen share. Katie, will you mute someone I met? Yeah, I go. did. I got it. I, I was just a little slow there. Sorry. That's all right. Thanks. So um, with polling, we'll come back and see. I don't know why um, that is, but we'll make sure we come back to that. So in a screen share, this is really something you'll use a lot as a teacher. Um, if I wanted to, if you want to share a PowerPoint, just like I'm doing, or um, you wanted to share possibly a video um, that you wanted the whole class to watch, this is what you would click. You click that screen share, and then you get something like this with a lot of options. Um, I'll kind of talk through them. Some I'll show a little bit more than others. What I did right now is I, I just shared my full desktop. Um, and then I have access to everything. And sometimes um, you maybe just want, I could have just sh um, shared Google Chrome because that's what the slideshow is in. I also had my email up, probably wouldn't want to share that. Um, but that's the things, anything I had open will show up down here and I can just choose one of them. Now I have chosen just the screen sh or uh, like Google Chrome, but then maybe I had something, um, I had a file stored on my desktop and I'm like, oh, here, let me show you this. Well, they weren't able to see that because I'm only allowing them to see my, what's in Google Chrome. So that's why I like to share desktop because I might skip around to other, um, uh, maybe I pull up a, a QuickTime video or something. And so that's what I do. You decide what you would like to do, um, whether you just wanna do one specific application or your whole desktop. There's also a whiteboard. If I click this, that allows me to basically have a black blank um, whiteboard that I can write on. There is a, for me, I just have a trackpad. I don't have a mouse. So this isn't probably the best thing, kind of difficult in my situation. There is a better way if I want like a whiteboard to um, write problems out or something or annotate on something. Um, and that would be this iPhone or iPad. Um, I pair it through AirPlay and then whatever is on my iPad or the problems I'm working show up in the shared um, uh, Zoom here. And I have some steps for that. I can also connect that through a cable, or like I said, just choose one application. Now, if I'm gonna share a video, um, and like I have a YouTube video that I want us to watch together because I'm gonna stop it, and we're gonna talk about it, and I'll play some more. It's really important that you click this share computer sound um, because otherwise they, they'll, possibly hear it, but it'll have to um, not come through the computer. It's just, I don't know, not the quality isn't there. So you're gonna have people saying, oh, I can't hear that very well. So you wanna remember to click this, and unfortunately you have to click it every time. It's not a default, it doesn't stay on. Um, so you have to remember to do that. So then I chose it whichever, it, yep. Especially be important if you're using headphones, because yes. you would hear the video, the computer sound, but they would. Right. Yeah, because I'm like hearing it and people are like, we can't hear because I had forgotten to, to uh, click that. All right, so whichever one I chose and I click share. Oh, what is going on here? My, my uh, deal is too big. So um, if I wanted to, this, this one over here sharing uh, my iPhone or my iPad, there's some steps for that. If I click that, 
maybe I'm a math teacher and I want to work some problems out for them and I want them to see it kind of like working on your whiteboard um, in front of the class, but it'll be your iPad. So when I click that, this is what I get, which it means is my iPad has to be on the same network, um, Wi-Fi network as my computer. And then I'm going to select AirPlay, select the Zoom room that you're in, and then enable mirroring. So what does that look like? So if I pull down from the right-hand corner of my iPad, I get this. And I want to do screen mirroring. So I would click that. And then there's my Zoom room. So I would click that. And um, when I'm ready to stop, I would click that. But basically, it's going to share whatever's on my iPad. Let's say I go to my Notes app. And I can start writing by using the annotation tool right here, and I can work out some problems. So that's a nice feature if you, or you maybe want to annotate over some text, um, whatever it might be. All right, another feature that hopefully most of you have found is the chat box. Right down here, um, if you click on the chat, then you can chat. Now, I didn't have anybody in here when I was doing this. But if I clicked, if I, there was other people like now, you could do a private chat. If I clicked right here on the little carrot beside everyone, individual people's names would show up. And you could do a private chat. Now, this is something that can be turned off, the private chat, in settings. And as a teacher, I might want to turn private chat off. So kids can't be chatting each other about what they're going to do um, on the weekend, which should be stay home. Um, but uh, so as a teacher, if I was using this for class, I might, that might be something I would do is turn off my private chat. Um, and that is in settings and we'll get there at the end where we show you how to change your um, profile picture. Next. And I would also, sorry, yeah. I was just going to add in Molly that I would assure everybody that if you record your Zoom room, that the chat doesn't show up on your recording. That's correct. Yep. Very good, thank you. So back, this is the next thing is recording. If I click that little record button, I have two options. I can record to my computer or record to the cloud. And actually I'm not sure the basic, how much cloud records you get. Um, you can't do any, any Molly. No cloud. You only okay. records to your computer and you don't even have that option. Okay, um, so it just, just automatically. Record or not record. Right, so yours goes to um, the computer automatically. So I was going to tell you that you, that's what I would do anyway, because it's easier to use it. So um, on your computer, in your documents, Zoom automatically creates a folder. And then all of your recordings will go to that folder. So here's all of my recordings, and it's listed by date. Um, I can rename them. I can take that. I usually take my video out um, and put it into QuickTime or iMovie to do some editing mostly because I just need to clip the ends because I give myself a little um, time at the beginning to make sure everything's running correctly. And then from there, you could also upload it to Google if you want to do that. Or I prefer to go the um, upload it to YouTube um, and then just share the link. The last little tool there you have is breakout rooms. Now for um, teachers, I think this is really, really neat. If you click breakout rooms, it's going to put kids into different rooms. And we'll actually experience that in just a second. I'll go live. I didn't have anybody in my Zoom meeting when I was taking the snapshot. But if I had 45 participants like I have now, if I can say put them in um, seven rooms. And I can have them do it automatically or I can do it manually. If I have pre-assigned groups, so I'm talking in class, now we're going to work on our group projects, I'll go in here. And I will manually put whoever's in that group, in their own little group, create the breakout rooms. The nice thing about this as the teacher, I see what's happening in my breakout rooms just by um, the names of the people and whether their video's on or off or everybody's muted. If everybody's muted in the breakout room, work's not happening. So then I can join any breakout room I want to at any time. So if I see everybody's muted, I can join that breakout room and go, hey, what's going on here? You know, why is everybody muted? Um, we all should be unmuted working together. And then I can leave that breakout room at any time also. So we'll practice that in about two minutes um, so you can see what that looks like. It's a great feature. You, the recording does not 
um, record the breakout rooms. Unfortunately, there's no recording in it. I don't know that there's a good way to do that other than you just have to pop in and out and monitor those, those breakout rooms. Um, the last thing over here where it says end meeting, um, you can just leave the meeting. If you have kids that still wanna work in your room and you are gonna leave, I would recommend two things. I would recommend that before you leave, you do this. You make one of those kids the host so that when they leave, they click end meeting for all, and then people can't rejoin it. Just, a, just a, one of those suggestions um, that's out there. Or if I'm the teacher and we're done, I don't want them popping in here, then, or I don't want them staying on, then we end meeting for all. I did hear that a teacher um, left a Zoom room, this was like first graders, and a couple of them didn't leave, so the teacher must have just done leave meeting instead of end meeting for all. And so these kids spent another hour or so just chatting with each other, little first graders in uh, the teacher's Zoom room. So that can happen. If, if you're okay with that, wouldn't worry about it. But I would just end meeting for all if it's completely over or make one of your students the host so that when their group work is done, then they just click end meeting for all. All right. Couple tips and tricks before we go back live and I'll show you those other little things that we've talked about. Um, have fun. <laughs> this should be fun. Um, I wouldn't get on a Zoom and lecture. I wouldn't do what I'm doing right now, actually. Um, I would try to break it up, be a little more interactive. Um, shorter is better for kids. Um, you know, whether they've got some work time, some group time, maybe you wanna leave it on and they're working but you're just meeting one-on-one -on -one with kids. And that's another thing you can do. You can just put one kid in a breakout room and then join that breakout room and chat with them. You know, if they're having difficulty or work problems with them, that's, that's great. Use a buddy. If you have a large class like this, probably you won't, but, or if you're even having a meeting, make someone a co-host so they can help, like Katie is monitor questions, monitor um, the uh, mute, unmute, those kind of things. Then I had someone suggest breaking up a class. So what this was, was it was actually a grandma that was observing um, her little first or second grade um, granddaughter in a Zoom room with the teacher. And the teacher was mostly just checking in on kids. So she was asking every kid a question, like, you know, uh, what did you have for breakfast? And um, the kids, uh, we're taking, you know, it just took a long time. All the answers started to become the same and she didn't get through all the kids in the amount of time she wanted. So there was 20 kids in that. She suggested maybe break it up if you're doing something like that with just invite 10 kids this time, 10 kids next time, and then do a full class a different time. So depending on what you're doing, that's a great option. Talk about Zoom etiquette. There's a lot of things out there. Um, you know, don't be eating, don't be, you know, laying down with the, look at your camera, is it pointed up your nose, all those kind of things. Don't take it to the bathroom. There's a great video out there about someone, an adult who forgot she was on Zoom. Uh, yeah, um, try to build, use this as a relationship builder. You know, this is your only check-in with those kids and they maybe really don't need a lot of work. They need some um, personal interaction. So use this time to build relationships. Um, once again, we talked about muting video to save bandwidth, home bandwidth, that might be an option. Laugh often. Um, in this time, we need a lot of laughter. Um, so I'm going to quit. We'll go questions and then we'll go live to a few of those things I still need to show you. Katie, what do we have for questions? Nothing. Kata, I'm going to review how to change your profile picture, even though I think I answered that in the chat. but. Okay. Uh, so there's a couple. Just, oh, yeah. Maybe you don't need to, but if Profile. you want to, yeah, just. I, I'm just going to go to settings. Sorry. Yep. Will that work? I'll go to settings. There'll be a few things there. Um, the easiest way to get to your settings is I'm going to cut my video again here. I think I'm cutting out is to um, go to a web browser and go to zoom.us. So I'm gonna show you how that looks um, going to a web browser. So once again, I'm gonna share my screen and I'm just gonna pick my desktop 
And I am going to um, get out of that, find a new window, but I got it. Okay. So I would just go to zoom.us. That's always how to get to anything Zoom. When you're here, there's a couple things I will show you. Mm, I'm already logged in. Let me log out so you see what it looks like. Oops, sorry. There we go. All right, so when you come to Zoom, this is what it would look like. Um, you can join a meeting here. We have had some schools that are asking if their kids can join just through um, the web browser. If that's an issue, there's some workarounds um, because it usually wants to take you to the app and they didn't, they ha don't have the ability to download the app on their devices. So, but I sign in. If your email is a Google email, you can sign in with Google. If it's not Google, then you would have to do this sign in process up here. So I'm going to sign in with Google. All right, so now I'm in. If um, I wasn't right here, I would want to find my profile. And once you've uploaded a picture, you, yours probably doesn't have anything, it could be add picture here under profile. Um, you've uploaded a picture, that should show up over here. That's also gonna show up in your um, home screen when you click the app, your picture will be up there. So zoom.us, Underneath your profile, you will not have all of this that I have over here. And yours will probably say basic, um, different things like that. Couple things since we're here, I would suggest. Right here, your personal ID number, you won't be able to pick it, but I would click edit and make sure that this box is checked. So it's always the same number for your personal ID. And then memorize that number if you want. And then there was some other setting Oh, turning off the private chat. That's down under settings. And I probably have more here than you would have, but if you come down to chat someplace here. Nope, I must have went too far. Polling, co-host. There it is, chat. So when I find the chat, and the private chat, mine is turned on. That might be something you want to turn off if yours is on. But that would be in your, in your basic meeting settings. Anything else, Katie, that we uh, haven't covered that people have had questions on that you haven't been able to or weren't able to answer those? No? No, Molly, that's really good. I think you've covered everything they've asked and we can see if they want to unmute and ask some more, but I would just like uh, reiterate that there, there's a lot in those Zoom settings and over the course of the last few years you it's using it, I still don't know everything in there. Just use the basic features and then when you run into an issue, email Molly or I and then we'll maybe point you to the oh. setting if it's available. Right, Deb, the polling. I will show you from here. Um, and then if you go to my slides under that bit.ly, you'll be able to also see the polling. I don't know why it wouldn't load. But one is our YouTube channel. And on that YouTube channel, um, there is a playlist with that I've been tagging Zoom things. And so right here is how to use Zoom to record my lessons. Here's connecting that iPad through the Zoom share. Um, here's one on how to have students join the best way to capture that and send it to them. So as we, as these get up, they'll, they'll end up here. Or if there's something you want, send Katie and I and we'll try and get a video up. 